Hello. Good morning. Um, I am Francesca DeBrito. I'm the Senior Vice President of Habitat for Humanity of Greater LA. I just want to welcome you all to the site. Um, just as a little bit of uh, housekeeping, you know, the six feet distance would be great. Keep your masks on, please. So um, she's been with us for 23 years as our president and CEO. Uh, it's an honor to work for her. Um, she was our very first staff person, as everyone knows, and she's a Long Beach native. Um, she's grown us to an amazing organization, and I think a lot of you here have known her for many years. A few of you may have hired her. <laughs> um, you made a very good hiring choice, so I just want to say that as one of um, uh, the folks on, on the staff that loves her. So anyway, introduce Erin Rank, our president and CEO, and uh, thanks again for uh, being here today. Thank you. I think we're going to try to do this with masks on um, and have each of our presenters just keep masks on for safety reasons. But welcome, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us here today. It's so nice to have you here in this little slice of what seems like normal life after what's been in a kind of a crazy 10 months. So um, this is our Millennium Homes site, and it is called that here in the Washington neighborhood because it is the site of our 1,001st Habitat for Humanity home in Greater LA. So let's give it up for 1,001. We are gonna raise the first walls today on this site. And um, I'm really excited, as Francesca mentioned, for me personally, I was born just two blocks from here at St. Mary Medical Center here in Long Beach. My family was uh, um, working at, my dad was an accountant at McDonnell Douglas. My mom was a physical therapist at um, Tishner Clinic. And uh, they saved up their money from those two jobs and they were able to buy their first home here in Long Beach um, near Millican High School for, I think it was a scant 20 or $30,000. And those were the days when two, uh, two adults with incomes could actually afford to buy a house in the marketplace. And so it's much tougher now for an accountant and a physical therapist to put their money together and buy a home. And I realized that. And so this is part of the passion for me is to make sure that families who are hardworking families have the opportunity at home ownership, because I know that because my parents were homeowners, it was uh, easier for me to have a stable place to live and to study. They were able to send me to college with the equity that they built in their homes. And, uh, and my, my trajectory in life was different because my parents were homeowners. And we wanna provide that opportunity for all hardworking families that they have a safe and stable place to live that is affordable. And so Habitat for Humanity started here in Long Beach. Uh, the Greater LA chapter uh, built our first home here in Long Beach. Yeah, uh, started in 1990 and well, actually 1991, but the idea started in 1989 with some founders that you're gonna meet here today. So I just wanna say it's very special to have you here uh, to raise these first walls. Um, normally we would be holding a very large uh, wall raising event. This is the biggest event we've had in a year. So to us, it seems big now. But um, in the interest of safety and health, we, we wanted to invite each of the, the groups that have uh, sponsored one of these 10 homes and uh, to be here at least for our very first walls. There are more than 200 individuals and companies and faith groups that have generously already contributed funds uh, to this historic development. And I wanna acknowledge some of them here today. You'll be hearing from them shortly. First of all, of course, the city of Long Beach, this was one of their properties, uh, actually two properties side by side here that they had for quite a long period of time. So we're grateful to the city um, for uh, working with us to acquire the land. Also Edison International is a full house sponsor, the Amundsen Foundation, City National Bank, um, the Founders Club, Matt and Kirsten Hansen, David Reed, Wendy Burton, and all of our Founders Group who's contributed to one of these houses. We also have, in addition to that very special home, um, some homes that are in memory of people who are part of our family, uh, who we've lost recently. And uh, one of them is former board member Randall Farwell and his family, Kathy, 
uh, and her kids are here today. You're going to hear from them in a minute. And we're building one home and, and his friends and family are actually helping to sponsor that home in his honor. We also have a beloved one of our um, volunteer crew leaders, Greg Rash, who we lost this past year and we're building one of these homes in his memory and in his honor. And his wife, Debbie, and her family are here today as well. Let's give them both a big round of applause. We also have with us the Habitat LA Catholic Coalition who's sponsoring a home, the Habitat LA Long Beach Area Faith Coalition, Griffles Shared Services of North America, IKEA of Carson, Bank of America, Laser Fish, Union Bank, and the National Charitable Foundation. So on behalf of LA, we would like to thank all of our supporters for partnering with us on this site. Let's give them all a big round of applause. As I mentioned, the city of Long Beach is where our affiliate built our first home. And uh, we're so excited. We knew that for our 1,000 and first home, we had to come back here to the city of Long Beach. That was 30 years ago, 31 years ago now, that this uh, amazing uh, movement started here in Long Beach. And um, we're excited to continue to create affordable housing uh, opportunities for those in need here in Long Beach. And we're honored to have a short message uh, with you uh, today for all of you with our mayor of this esteemed city, Mayor Robert Garcia. Hey everyone, it's Mayor Robert Garcia and I'm really happy to be here virtually with all of you uh, at this wall raising ceremony. Uh, First Habitat for Humanity is such an important organization and Habitat LA has done so much work here in Long Beach uh, in building so many homes. Uh, this project is also very unique. Uh, it's one that the city has been supporting and wanting to get off the ground uh, for many, many years. And I just wanna thank Aaron, uh, just the whole team, all of the volunteers, the staff, and also on the city side for making this project finally happen. Uh, it's gonna be such an impactful project uh, for this community, uh, one that really needs more quality housing uh, and support for all of our working families. So congratulations to Habitat, to the city, and really to the whole community for this incredible event. Thank you, Mayor Garcia. I'm sure you all have questions about the site and what it will look like and how many homes we're gonna have here and how many families will realize their dream of home ownership here because we are all participating on this site together. So we are here on 14th Pine and Pacific and I want to introduce our Senior Vice President of Community Development, Mr. Daryl Simeon, to tell you more about this site. Please welcome Daryl. Thank you, Erin, and welcome everybody. I'm, I'm kind of perplexed. I have not seen this many people together <laughs> in literally a year. So I really, really appreciate everyone coming out and celebrating the start of this great community. Uh, I am actually standing in the garage of one of the units. Uh, we are gonna be building 10 homes in this community. Uh, we started, we broke ground in December, so I was very excited to be where we're at right now, already in just two months. Uh, I was gonna be three buildings. It's going to be two duplexes and one sixplex, which is the big building behind me. Uh, each of the units will be two stories and they're going to have three beds and two wonderful full baths and also going to be about 1200 square feet each. So each home also is going to be built solar ready and also uh, what's really cool about this community is going to have a community uh, electric vehicle charge station. So it's going to be very cool. So people so we are building our homes to be ready for the future. Um, <clears throat> for this project, we're looking to be completed in early 2022. However, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm putting this out there in the universe. We're not gonna be able to make that deadline unless we have our volunteers there. So I'm putting it out there that we able to have the volunteers here and have you guys come out and help us build this community in the very, very, very near future. future. And with that, I wanna pass it back to Aaron. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Daryl. And we're so excited to have our first electric charging station at a Habitat for Humanity site. Way to be thinking to the future. That's very cool. All right, now I'd like to introduce um, some of the sponsors who are making this all possible. 
starting with our founders group, um, these are the folks who got together in their living rooms 31 years ago and said, hey, there's this movement called Habitat for Humanity and we think it would be great if Long Beach had this organization. And they are the reason that we are all here today at 1001 Homes. And from that early group, I would like to introduce our founder and first, pres our founder, Mr. David Reed, and our first president, Mr. Matthew Hansen. Please join me up here. Wendy, are you gonna join? 31 years ago, can you hear me? 31 years ago, Diane and I worked with the beginning of Habitat in Long Beach and the surrounding area. I brought Diane with me today. And this little picture was taken at Matt's and Kirsten's wedding. So Diane is here as a part of it. But I want to introduce you to somebody most of you have never heard about, the original founder of Habitat for Humanity in Long Beach. God's messenger was named Ira, Ira. Diane was on the International Advisory Committee for Millard Fuller. And our name, our phone number was published. And there came a phone call one day, Diane, my name is Ira. Why don't we have a habitat in Long Beach? And there came the normal song and dance. It's too expensive. Long Beach has building codes that just make it too expensive for us to build a habitat house in Long Beach. I want you to come to my home next week, Ira said to Diane. Next week, we gathered two blocks from here in Ira's house and 12 people, we always thought that was very special, 12 people gathered in that home. We started the organization, the thoughts about how to do it. And we planned to meet the next week in Ira's house and in calling to make that final arrangements to be in her home that next week, she was gone. She had fled immediately, overnight, one night, to avoid a, an abusive house, an abusive home. And we never heard from her again. Not once, but Ira is the real founder of Habitat for Humanity, Long Beach, South Bay, eventually Greater Los Angeles. We had a goal, Diane and I, and Wendy and Matt, of 10 houses in 10 years. It took us nine months to start the organization. It took us a year to build the first house, and it seemed appropriate that in 10 years we could build 10 houses. And it was wonderful, that the leadership that followed, Matt and Wendy, and then monumental progress through Aaron. Founding is important, but the follow through is essential. Godspeed and great thank you. So bringing Diane to be a part of it, we're gonna have her help lift the, 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 the wall and recognizing that Matt is our first president and Wendy was one of our first officers. They're gonna take a few minutes to say hi and congratulations and celebration. Martin Luther King had a dream that his children would be judged not by the color of their skin or the content, of, but the content of their character. Millard Fuller had a dream, the founder of Habitat for Humanity, that all people would have a simple, decent place to live. David, Wendy, myself, countless others have all been swept up in those dreams. My prayer is for the child that rests his head on a soft pillow inside of one of these homes, that they would know that they are loved, that their mind will be filled with God-inspired dreams like those mentioned, that they would endeavor to make our world a more perfect place, a more loving place, a more caring place. I thank you for helping me to be 
a more loving person, a caring person, an incredibly grateful person to have played some small little part in this miraculous thing that's happening today and the rest of the year here. Thank you. All right, Wendy. <laughs> well, we have to at least give Wendy a round of applause. She's one of our original board members. Come say a few words about your early days. I just want to say I am so grateful to be here. It's just so exciting to be on the grounds of another wonderful Habitat project. It's been a long time, um, but I think back fondly to the first ones. Um, and it's just, I think in this time of pandemic, we recognize more than ever how important it is to have a safe home to build a stronger community and to love one another. So thank you all for being here and being part of that community. Thank you, thank you David and Matthew and Wendy, and thank you for your early leadership. I looked up to you so much in the very beginning. I just wanted to make you guys proud and make you happy for your vision and for the dedication that you gave to our communities. And, um, and I'm so happy that you're all still involved with this ministry because God does work through us and, and uh, uses whatever talents we have. I tell my kids when they're thinking about what they want to study in college that, you know, I started out studying to be a veterinarian. It never occurred to me I would be a home builder, but God has different plans and God uses all of our talents for whatever, uh, whatever the best interest is that God has plans for our life. And I, I truly believe in that. Another very special board member who I've known for, for many, many years and who was just incredibly smart, incredibly funny, and just such a delight to be with uh, is, our, is uh, our honoree of our next house. Randy Farwell was a board member at Habitat LA when we merged with Habitat LA, and I asked him if he would please stay on the board. He was uh, wicked smart as far as all things financial and especially in real estate, and he's so, he's so well respected. But most of all, he was just a loving guy that we all enjoyed to be in around. We went on global village trips together and built all over the world together. And uh, he will always be part of this ministry and will always hold a very special place in my heart and that of my staff. And so um, in order in uh, here to represent the Randy Farwell Memorial House is his family. Um, and uh, we have Brian and Kathy and Carrie, his daughter is gonna come up here and speak on, on their behalf. So Carrie, would you like to come up? Hi everyone, I'm Carrie, Randy's daughter. I'm just gonna read. We are so honored to be building a home with Habitat in honor of my dad who passed away in May. For as long as I can remember, Habitat was discussed often and regularly in our home. And that all started with my dad's early involvement many years ago as a board member. Over this time as a board member and as his involvement grew, there's really one word that summarized how he felt about his position, privileged. He was privileged to work with and know the incredible Habitat team. He was privileged to get to know the families and their journeys towards home ownership. Both his and my mom's passion continued to grow the more they participated, the more homes they were able to help build locally and internationally, and most importantly, through the relationships that developed as a result of all their Habitat adventures. <laughs> People and families are the driving force behind Habitat, and building a future alongside a family inspired my dad to stay involved as much as he did. For those that knew my dad, they knew what incredibly high standards he had for any organization that he chose to be a part of. It was imperative that the organization had the highest integrity and ultimately that the people being served are treated as worthy partners and with respect and love. Our family knows these to be deeply true of Habitat and have been privileged to watch so many incredible families build their future home alongside those willing to help. My dad talked often about beating cancer so him and my mom could get busy planning another international build to partner with. If that's not passion, I don't know what is. My mom will undoubtedly carry on his dream of building again when it's safe to do so. But right now with his shared passion, we're honored to have so many friends and family helping us build this home. He would have wanted nothing more.
Thank you, Carrie. And we're so honored to build with all of you in memory of your dad. Another memorial home we'll be building on this site is in dedication to Greg Rash. He was one of our dedicated crew leaders without whom so much of our work would never happen. And uh, the, I have to say the thing that I love most about my job and actually the thing that gives me the most hope, especially in this day and time, is thinking about our Habitat for Humanity site and our volunteers. Uh, when you think about a Habitat site, there are no divisions. We don't know, um, you know political boundaries. We don't care if you're the CEO, if, you, if, you're the, if you're a pastor, if you're a student, if you're someone coming off the street with a hammer willing to help. We want everybody here. Habitat is the one place where everybody from all walks of life, from all of our th communities, are equal and uh, we join together in love and action. And we don't worry about what divides us, we worry about what unites us. And that's why we have the name, not just Habitat, but Humanity. We focus on the humanity that our communities need. And Greg was a great example of that. And here to speak on behalf of his family is his wife, Debbie. Please give her a warm round of applause. Uh, it is such a privilege to be part of this exciting new Habitat for Humanity project and to be able to partner in the building of a house in the name of my husband, Greg. Greg and I have valued the work of Habitat as a Christian organization that shows the love of Jesus by helping families achieve their dream of home ownership. We've worked in Los Angeles as well as the Philippines, Chile, and New Zealand Greg loved using his construction and engineering skills to build, but treasured the opportunities that he had to mentor young adults who were working on the site, as well as helping volunteers learn how to use tools. I'm so looking forward to coming back with friends and family when volunteers are once again allowed on the site to actually help with the build. Thank you to all of you who have made this build possible in Long Beach. Thank you, Debbie. Next, I'd like to bring up one of our board members and representatives of one of our major sponsors, Miss Linda Duncombe. Linda is with City National Bank, and, and City National has been a tremendous partner with Habitat LA, especially during the pandemic, when a lot of companies had to pull back on their philanthropic giving. City National leaned in, they gave us more, they helped us build more homes, and we're so thrilled that their partnership is going to continue here on this build site. Please help me welcome Ms. Linda Duncombe. Sorry, I have a really strong accent and you will struggle with that. Um, thank you, Erin. Yeah, thank you, Erin, and thank you, everybody. And I just want to acknowledge the families. I was so moved by your stories. They were just really beautiful, so thank you. Um, I look after marketing, product and digital at City National Bank and one of the reasons why I came was because it's a company that truly has a heartbeat and being connected to our community is very much part of our DNA and so I was delighted to be asked to come down today and be part of the wall raising for the Millennium Homes development and it's the 1000th and first home and so when you hear about the first 10 and now you're at this level it's just an extraordinary effort by everybody. Um, I just want to also just acknowledge that I am a board member, which I take enormous pride in. But we picked and we want to do lots of work with Habitat here in LA and across the country because you help families at the grassroots. Things that some of us may take for granted, like having a, a safe house, somewhere to sleep, a bed, a, a head for our pillows. Habitat, think about that 24-7. They live and breathe it and they bring it to homes. They bring people's dreams to reality. And we're so privileged to be a part of that. I just want to say thank you so much to everybody. Thank you for letting City National Bank be a part of this. Thank you to my team who worked tirelessly behind the scenes on all of our philanthropy work. And congratulations to everyone at Habitat and, and who is here today. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to do, introduce one of our foundational partners. They have committed to build three homes with Habitat for Humanity this year and we are celebrating our multi-year partnership with them this year, and that is Thrivent Financial. And to speak on behalf of Thrivent is another one of our board members, Mr. Jeff Delahante. Uh, this is quite a refreshing site. This is 
nice to see people coming together again. And uh, I have to say, every day I wake up and I uh, think about things I'm thankful for, not just on Thanksgiving, but every day. And one of the things I'm very thankful for, aside from my family, is my extended family. And I'm also thankful for all the hard work that I saw throughout this pandemic by nonprofits, by volunteer organizations, by corporations that stepped up and kept the understanding that we need to continue to build our communities up. And uh, uh, I, it just never gets old to see families become homeowners. And we're so proud to be a part of that. And we look forward to continuing our partnership with Habitat and those other wonderful corporations and, and businesses that you're hearing about today. We're thankful for those families that stepped up and started this. And we uh, hope to continue to pass that along to our children and our grandchildren. So again, thank you guys so much. And Aaron, we always thank you again for your partnership with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Next up, I want to introduce another one of our partners who's been building with us for many, many years. And we're so excited. They stepped forward and decided to start sponsoring one of these homes uh, long before we even owned the property. And that is our Habitat LA Catholic Coalition. And here to speak on behalf of the LA Catholic Coalition today is Miss Carol Sanborn. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you, Aaron. <clears throat> and thank you, Chris, for getting me involved in the Catholic Coalition to begin with. Um, the Catholic Coalition is a group of <clears throat> local Catholic churches and organizations that support Habitat for Humanity of Greater LA to create affordable and sustainable housing. As Catholics were inspired by the words and works of Pope Francis, who just this past week while addressing the 65th Los Angeles Religious Education Congress, spoke of the crises that we currently face in our world, a crisis both centered on health and housing. He reminded us that we never come out of a crisis the same. <clears throat> we come out better or worse, but never the same. In crisis, we reveal our heart, how solid it is, how merciful, how big, or how small. <clears throat> During my 25 years in pastoral ministry, I've been engaged in various social issues, including homelessness and affordable housing. And one of the things that has really become clear is that virtually every social challenge improves with secure and safe housing. People with chronic illness, with mental health issues, children with learning difficulties, and even family relationships improve when they're safe and stable housing. So in raising these walls today, we've acknowledged a crisis in affordable housing and through our commitment we reveal our hearts and we invest in the health and hope of all those who will both build these homes and those families that will inhabit them for years to come thank you thank you carol and carol represents catholic churches throughout los angeles county who have come together to help sponsor this home we also have a group of churches here in Long Beach. So they're they're uh, called the Long Beach Area Faith Coalition. And we have Paul Levitt here who is representing them. And we're so honored to have, like I said, just a cross section of support from corporations and foundations, individuals and in our faith community all coming together to make this dream a reality for these 10 families. Paul, welcome to the podium. Thank you first to all those working on Habitat, Aaron and Chris and the staff to make this happen. And uh, all the, especially all the volunteers on all the coalitions who are working to make homes here. And for those who have not never been to Long Beach, welcome to Long Beach. It's a great day to be, to be in our city. Um, as I was walking over here uh, and uh, you know, a couple of days ago, Chris uh, asked me to speak. I was walking over here thinking what I would say and it dawned on me that one thing in the Jewish faith tradition, uh, a married couple is married under what they call a chuppah. 
And a chuppah is made of basically four poles and typically it's a prayer shawl or a shroud of some kind. And it struck me that there is a lot of symbology, even though no one's getting married here today, there is still a lot of symbology that can be applied. The chuppah represents the home that the married couple will be building. And the fact that it is empty of possessions really means that within that home, they will be building spirit and individuality and be building a family. And that's more important than, than what's in the home as possessions or material goods. The shroud itself really means being protected and having protection from your God or what in non-Jewish tradition would be whatever your definition of God is. So today we are really all here uh, raising the chuppahs for these families. The walls, it's a nice day, it's, it's outdoors, the walls are not finished. But when they are finished, when these homes are finished, the families will be not only uh, the other reason, the other thing about the chuppah, by the way, is it's, it's open so that all can be welcomed who are coming through and coming to that shelter. In these homes, we are building, we're raising the chuppahs for these families so that all of their friends and family can be welcomed and they will also be building themselves, their children, their neighbors, their neighborhoods, and a sense of themselves and a sense of belonging and integrating into the communities. And that's really why this organization is called Habitat for Humanity because the other thought I had was it's an organization that brings people together of all walks of life, all personal persuasions, and for a couple hours on a build day, all of that melts away. As it's melting away today, as you look around, all, these, all this diversity of, of talent, of, of, of uh, faith, spirituality, personal choice, politics, and that's in very symbolic and very much needed in this very, very dis disparate time. So again, thank you very much, Habitat, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you so much, Paul, and thank you to each of our speakers. I would now like to introduce Pastor Wayne Cheney from Antioch Church here in the Washington neighborhood, about a less than a mile away from here. Uh, the, anti the congregants of Antioch Church have built with us. They've volunteered with us. They've helped us raise funds. And we're so proud for their leadership and their prayer over this community and all of the great community service they provide to the residents of this area. They are part of our Long Beach Faith Coalition and have been strong faith partners in our work, both here in the Washington neighborhood and throughout Long Beach. So here to give us our site blessing is uh, Pastor Cheney. Thank you so much for being here. I wanna make sure to take my hat off. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here with the organization that's doing so much great work, not only in our community, but across this globe. Uh, in my faith tradition, um, natural symbols that point to greater realities are pretty common. As I stand here, it is with the recognition that this is not simply ground, buildable ground. Nor is this just another place where families will be housed and, and make memories, but a symbol, a statement, a witness to the world of true community and neighborliness, what Dr. King called beloved community. If there ever time that we needed community, beloved community, it is right now. Uh, I know this is not a church service, but can I please get an amen? amen. <laughs> there is, in this moment, an opportunity to employ, and I want to celebrate you for employing what we see in the parable captured by Jesus of the Good Samaritan. That wasn't simply a man who did a good deed, but it was in response to a question raised by a Jewish lawyer at the time, who is my neighbor? And as opposed to speaking in linear fashion, he must have been a black preacher because he spoke in circular fashion. He, colorful, 
uh, communication. He, he told them a story of a man who fell by the side of the road, who fell amongst robbers, and we understand that he was wounded. Make a long story short, interestingly, he makes as the protagonist of that story a man who is Samaritan in an audience full of fellow Jews. He wasn't making a statement simply about a man who did a good deed, but rather about someone who was willing to cross the chasm of difference, cross the chasm of hostility to extend goodness to this man. He said, that is a neighbor. So neighbor is not the one that is most like me, but my neighbor is the one sometimes, or the depth of neighborliness is the one willing to connect with the one that is least like me. He, he drew near to the man which is proximity. The beautiful thing about this is there's proximity created with people from all walks of life. As he created proximity, he moved from proximity to empathy, he felt compassion for him. You don't really feel a depth of compassion without getting close to people that are not like you. But then he didn't simply feel compassion, he did something about that compassion he felt Thank you for the commitment you made not to just feel compassion for those that need to be housed, but for actually doing something about it. We're standing here because of what you decided to do. He engaged, but then the case can be made for equity. He didn't just give the man what he decided that day, but he said, whatever he needs to get back up on his feet, that's what we're going to do. And I want to celebrate Habitat for Humanity for doing that, not just giving people something but giving them what they need to get to where they need to be. We're grateful for that. And so it's with that thought that we demonstrate this true community and neighborliness. I thank you for demonstrating a neighborliness of biblical proportion for those who are different. It's a place where those with diverse backgrounds, ideologies, ethnicities converge in one place to demonstrate community and true neighborliness. So now, Lord, we ask you to teach us not only to have neighborliness, but to become, or neighborhoods rather, but to become neighbors as a symbol and demonstration to the world of the possibilities in you. Cause your blessing to rest on these grounds, but more importantly on its people. We pray your blessing on every board member, every employee, every laborer, and every inhabitant. And we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise it deserves for answering these, our prayers. And now, God, we thank you for being the love in every believing heart, the peace in every believing mind, the breath in every believing spirit, and the life in every believing soul. And it's the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Well, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Cheney, for that beautiful blessing and for reminding us that this is what Dr. Martin Luther King talked about when he talked about the beloved community. That is what Habitat for Humanity is living out through the good works of all of you who are here. And now are we ready to raise those walls? All right, I would ask our speakers to come line up here along the wall, and I'm gonna turn it over to our fearless site supervisor, Tom, who's gonna to explain how this is all gonna happen. Watch your step as you're coming up here, and join me at the wall.
Right. Okay. We started, okay. and I thought, gee, maybe I should move back to San Diego to be able to be involved with Habitat. Yeah. And it was like a week later, I got a postcard in the mail that you were having a meeting. Yeah. And it was just kind of one of the first examples, I think, yeah. of seeing God in the timing yeah. mm. and in bringing people together. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. We had that big discussion about how they built the houses in Tijuana and they built them with styrofoam and yeah. chainsaws. I'll never because, forget how and, and sore my legs were after doing that Because they laid, <laughs> they laid, this was this was a styrofoam wall. Yeah. And yeah. They lifted the styrofoam tied it together with, with coat hangers and then put an inch of concrete on both sides of the wall, having cut places in the styrofoam for the windows and doors. And you know, I ran into something about a month ago, which I passed at Marina. They are now building printing with a 3D printer houses of 1,200 to 2,000 square feet in Texas. Yeah. Printing 3D printer wow. with, with liquid concrete uh, <laughs> as, their, as their building material, as their ink. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. How we've gone from styrofoam to, cut, uh, to uh, coat hangers and now maybe a 3D printer eventually being a part of how we build houses. What I love about that first house that I was sharing with you was, I mean, if there ever ever is an example of the impact that Habitat has on a family, um, that fam, the Lopez family is, right. I mean, now they've been in that house, I guess it's 30 plus years. 30 years. Um, Antonia Jr., who was, you know, knee high mm -hmm. when we had this event for her, is now at Columbia getting a, a master's or PhD in education. PhD, I think. PhD wow. in education. So um, and, uh, and you know, still, when I stop by, Antonia, mom, uh, greets me as the president, which I really appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very Mr. good. President. If I'm ever feeling down, that's the place I need to go. <laughs> that's neat. <laughs> so, that's neat. Yeah.